You're listening to the Weekly Wrap-Up on Sprott. Well, greetings once again from Sprott Money News and SprottMoney.com. This is your Weekly Wrap-Up. It's Friday, July 21st, 2017. I'm your host, Craig Hemke, and joining us as usual this morning is Eric Sprott himself. Eric, good morning. I'm Craig. Great to be here. As usual, before we get started, we always like to let you know a little bit more about Sprott Money. So just as a reminder, this weekly wrap-up is brought to you by Sprott Money. We deal with mints around the world to bring you the highest quality bullion and numismatics. Visit our site at SprottMoney.com to shop now. Uh, Eric, we got a lot to talk about, my friend. It's been a very busy week, even though we're kind of in the summer doldrums. Uh, You know, it was just two weeks ago that we had the latest employment report. Gold closed down around 12, 15. Silver was down below 16, and the sky was falling, but ever since... We are up eight out of nine days and looking to be up again today to make it nine out of ten. What do you think of all this? Well, of course, uh, it's a very familiar topic to us, and we saw the uh, reversal of the uh, commitment to trader positions where the commercials were massively short up at 1290, orchestrated the decline, they totally reversed their position, and now we got the, the speculative hedge funds uh, short in both silver and gold, and it looks like and now... Uh, it looks like we're going through some of the uh, technical areas on the upside here, the 50-day, 100-day, things like that, which is typically what causes the hedge funds to come back in and buy again. So, I mean, it, it almost makes you sick to think of what happened there, that you can orchestrate these declines, everyone would sell because they go through the 50-day on the downside, then they take them back up again, then everyone buys again. And, of course, in the meantime, the commercial is just taking hundreds of millions of dollars out of the pool. Um, so uh, that's what, what we have to deal with. We've talked about it hundreds of times. I think the, the bigger issues that you and I deal with is, you know, what's going on with physical man, what's going on with the economy, what is logical to expect going forward, and ultimately those things will weigh in here. Uh, but on these little, you know, short-term things, we've got to worry about the COT report. The COT report is, is in wonderful shape right now, so I would expect that things will continue to move up here. Yes, and as you point out, those moving averages, so many of those speculator trading funds that are short key off of those moving averages and where price is relative to those moving averages. So moving up and through it looks like could maybe even set off a little bit of a short squeeze, huh? Well, as, 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 I, as I look at gold today, I think the 50 days around 12.50, and we're at 12.51 and 12.52 here. So, you know, if those guys are sticking to their script, you, you might think they would, uh, would be buyers here. So... Uh, I mean, it's an awful way that we have to run this stupid business. Is there's been some great articles written, I also by yourself included, about how little of the the trading in on the comets ever results in physical deliveries. Like it has hardly anything to do with physical deliveries. So it's it's awful that uh, we're we're run by the comets, but uh, for the time being we are, and uh, the comets position is very bullish for both gold and silver as it as we speak. Now, we look at the physical market, and as you and I both know, it has maybe a secondary impact at some point on price with the way these machines trade the paper. But the physical market is an interesting, I'll point out a little conundrum to you. Ever since that flash crash back on June 26th of the gold price, the GLD inventory, and whether it's all theirs, it may be a topic for another day, but the GLD inventory is down 35 metric tons. Of, of gold. Now, at the same time, we see these just extraordinary export numbers, the latest which were written up by Steve San Angelo talking about the amount of gold flowing out of Australia into China. And you put that on the pile with the amount of gold leaving the U.S., the amount of gold leaving the U.K., and all that's flowing out too. Interesting little dichotomy there, wouldn't you say? Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. In, in the one time in eleven when they absolutely massacred gold, uh, there was a huge withdrawal from the GLD. But I believe that they massacred gold on the comic to get the gold from the GLD because they needed it for deliveries because the, the Indian demand was going crazy. And, you know, when you, you've you written about these export numbers from the States, as has Steve St. Angelo, and, you know, we're exporting more gold than we produce, uh, which means it's, it's coming from, it could be coming from the U.S. Treasury here. And, of course, the Treasury before it came from the GLD. So I think part of this whole, you know, um, scenario we go through when we knock it down, it causes people to sell their GLDs. And, of course, I think the dealers are sitting there buying these shares and redeeming them. 
because there, were, there is physical gold that's moving. When you look at the data that Steve provided about Australia, I think the gold exports were something like 54% to China. I mean, these are big numbers, right? They're the highest ever, their first quarter export numbers. Same with the U.S., that these exports to China are going up significantly. So the physical demand is there. I mean, the Indians have been huge buyers this year. The Chinese have been huge buyers. Um, there is lots of physical demand. If we could ever get sort of a sentiment change here in, in North American markets, then maybe the individuals and the institutions would come back as well. Erica, one more last topic I want to kind of get you to expand upon. I know you're an observer of, of just about everything from economics to the metals to the politics. And here in the States, uh, we have such an interesting political situation where it seems as if nothing is going on. The, in, no one wants to work with the president, it seems. And uh, here we sit with nothing happening, and that seems to be impacting the dollar. So just your thoughts on the politics and the economy here in the States, and then we can use that to segue into the dollar. Well, you know, the, obviously uh, there's divisiveness in the Republican Party and solidarity in the Democrats that they hate the Republicans. So uh, you've got to get some solidarity in the Republican Party if you're ever going to pass anything because you, you do have a majority, but there's always these splinter groups. And uh, I thought David Stockman wrote a wonderful piece that was on Zero Hedge uh, yesterday suggesting when we come to this debt uh, limit thing, if we have holdout Republicans here, I mean, I, he's really doubting that we'll ever get a, a debt limit passed. And, of course, that's going to bring huge pressure on, one, the economy, but, two, the U.S. dollar. And the U.S. dollar has been a very weak currency this year. I think it's on 7% from the beginning of the year. Um, and, and there's no signs of, of any cohesiveness uh, between Congress and the White House. And, like, it's just... It looks like nothing is going to happen. So we get this, we're going to have this infighting going on here. And, of course, it doesn't help that the mainstream media has decided that their mission in life is to try to crucify on Trump, no matter what happens. Uh, it's always about Trump and Russia. And, you know, and so they can't get anything done here. And it, it's not a good situation for people to find themselves in. And, of course, the, the dollar weakening is, is good for gold. What, what is everyone outside of the U.S.? thinking about what's happening there, I mean, let alone the people in the United States. I mean, there's just nothing happening. All the, the whole program that Trump came in on and this whole theoretical Trump rally, which I don't think was a Trump rally, by the way, I think it was um, uh, central planners being involved in the market. And I think a lot of these markets going up to central planners in the market. I mean, it's hard to look at the economic data and wonder, you know, why are we all getting so excited here? So, anyway... I, I think the, um, you know, there's, there's three big problems. I call it the PhD. We got the pensions, health, and debt, uh, all huge issues, economic issues that are all kind of grinding things down. They're not going away. And uh, I suspect that the, the dollar will continue to weaken here. Well, and that's, I guess, where I wanted to take us for our last question. It, yeah, you're, you're right to point that out. This all ties together. There's a reason why. The dollar index is down actually close to 9% now year-to-date, Eric. And uh, that is something that, that may impact kind of a rising tide lifting all boats, right? Because about the only undervalued sector left anywhere at this point is commodities in general. So in a sense, this might be working in our favor too if the dollar continues to fall. Is that how you see it? And, and one of the problems with the dollar falling that most people don't comprehend is it causes inflation because people exporting to you are exporting in different currencies. So your BMW and your Audi are going to cost more and uh, because of the, the currency translation. So you can end up with, with inflation because of the decline in your dollar, and, you, and therefore you have inflation with no wage increases to speak of, and it just grinds the middle classes, so the middle class doesn't have all the problems in the world already. So um, most of the signs about the economy are weak. Uh, we talked about car sales and retail sales and restaurant sales, and uh, Philly Fed this week was awful, and the other Fed reports seem to be awful. So there's really no tangible signs of, uh, of any significant recovery going on here. So I don't see further rate increases. If they happen, uh, it's going to be a sorry state of affairs uh, in, in the stock market, and I think anything that 
cause their stocks to weaken is, is, is going to bring people to pay more attention to the precious metals, which is uh, what we want to see. Yep, and it seems like a good time to visit that uh, the storage pages and the inventory pages of Sprott Money because it sure, it sure seems like a good stew for higher prices in the months ahead between the cot structure and a falling dollar and everything else. Would you say so? Well, it's looking good. I mean, uh, we've had we've recovered pretty well 50% of the losses from the 1290 high. Uh, the fiscal data looks good. The economic data looks good. The geopolitical data looks good for gold. So... You know, we got to, we've ticked a lot of boxes here, and uh, let's hope it uh, carries on, and we get lots of great things to talk about next week. Sounds like a good idea, my friend. I think we'll just leave it there. Thank you for all your time. It's always fun to visit with you, and I know people around the world find it very informative. At this point, we'll wrap it up, and I'll look forward to speaking with you again next week. Hey, great. All of us. Thanks a lot. And from all of us here at Sprott Money News and SprottMoney.com, thank you for listening. We'll talk to you again next week. And uh, the COMEX position is very bullish for both gold and silver as it, as we speak. Now, we look at the physical market, and as you and I both know, it has maybe a secondary impact at some point on price with the way these machines trade the paper. But the physical market is an interesting, I'll point out a little conundrum to you. Ever since that flash crash back on June 26 of the gold price, the GLD inventory and whether it's all theirs, it may be a topic for another day, but the GLD inventory is down 35 metric tons of of gold. Now, at the same time, we see these just extraordinary export numbers, the latest which were written up by Steve San Angelo, talking about the amount of gold flowing out of Australia into China. I can't buy again, so, I mean, it, it almost makes you sick to think of what happened here, that you can orchestrate these declines, or you want to sell things to go through the 50 day on the downside, then we take them back up again, then we don't buy it again. And of course, in the meantime, the commercial has just taken hundreds of millions of dollars out of the pool. Um, so uh, that's what, what we have to do. We, we've talked about it hundreds of times. I think the, the bigger issues that you and I deal with is you know, what's going on with physical demand, what's going on with the economy, what is logical to expect going forward. And ultimately, those things will weigh in here. Uh, but on these little you know, short-term things, we got to worry about the COT report. The COT report is, is in wonderful shape right now, so I would expect that things will continue to move up here. Yes, and as you... You're listening to The Weekly Wrap-Up on Sprott... Well, greetings once again from Sprott Money News and SprottMoney.com. This is your Weekly Wrap-Up. It's Friday, July 21st, 2017. I'm your host, Craig Hemke, and joining us as usual this morning is Eric Sprott himself. Eric, good morning. Okay, great, great to be here. As usual, before we get started, we always like to let you know a little bit more about Sprott Money. So just as a reminder, this weekly wrap-up is brought to you by Sprott Money. We deal with mints around the world to bring you the highest quality bullion and numismatics. Visit our site at SprottMoney.com to shop now. Uh, Eric, we got a lot to talk about, my friend. It's been a very busy week, even though we're kind of in the summer doldrums. Uh, you know, it was just two weeks ago that we had the latest employment report to point out those moving averages. So many of those speculator trading funds that are short key off of those moving averages and where price is relative to those moving averages. So moving up and through it looks like could maybe even set off a little bit of a short squeeze, huh? Well, as, 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 I, as I look at gold today, I think the 50 days around 1250 and we're at 1251 to 1252 here. So, you know, if those guys are sticking to the script, you, you might think they would, uh, would be buyers here. So, uh, I mean, it's an awful way that we have to run this stupid business. Is there's been some great articles written, I also by yourself included, about how little of the the trading in on the comments ever results in physical deliveries. Like it has hardly anything to do with physical deliveries. So it's it's awful that uh, we're we're run by the comments, but uh, for the time being, port gold closed down around twelve fifteen. Silver was down below sixteen, and the sky was falling. But ever since. We are up eight out of nine days and looking to be up again today to make it nine out of ten. What do you think of all this? Well, of course, uh, it's, a, it's a very familiar topic to us, and we saw the uh, reversal of the uh, commitment to traders' positions where the commercials were massively short up at 1290, orchestrated the decline, they totally reversed their position, and now they got the, the speculative hedge funds uh, short in both silver and gold, and it looks like and now... Uh, it looks like we're going through some of the technical 
areas on the upside here, the 50-day, 100-day, things like that, which is typically what causes the hedge funds to come 